guys, what is going on? Today we are in a modified, heavily modified Porsche 911 996 Turbo done up by the guys over at Protomotive over here in the great United States of America in the natural state. Now, do you guys know what the natural state is? I did not either, okay? <laughs> Arkansas, we're in Arkansas. Uh, I actually have to look up on a map where Arkansas was and we found this awesome 1,000 wheel horsepower Porsche 911. Uh, this is gonna be quite the experience. So let's take it for a drive, see what she's all about, see what this family of Porsche tuners is all about out here in the middle of nowhere, what they're doing here, what they're building, and why you should care. Alright you guys, currently going down uh, to Protomotive in the middle of Arkansas. 150 acre property uh, and this is the road to get there. Oh this is cool dude. Wow. Work in the road and then where are we going? Down there? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Todd, this is Cynthia, my wife, an engine builder. Been in Porsche business since, what, 1984? Uh, manufacturing high performance products for Porsches. A thousand horsepower plus is kind of the norm around here, even though we do general tunes and easy parts, bolt on parts. I think isolation, um, uh, being a little bit of a recluse here, is critical in doing what we do. Um, we don't do retail, people don't come in here, and so we're able to really focus on the manufacturing and the quality of the product here. And I think that um, there are distractions when you have people in and out of the shop. Um, we all have our own separate responsibilities and our own separate identities in Protomotive, and um, we love what we do. There has to be a passion here, otherwise there will be no excellent product and that's the key you know our product takes a long time to make and it's all hand fabricated and hand built and we've done this for a long time and we continue to love what we do Ooh, I like that Here's our bill of cranks 4340 that's what's in the blue car So having never driven a 996 before, <laughs> open wastegates on a turbocharged 911 has got to be one of the most insane experiences uh, <laughs> I've ever had. And I actually got away from that SUV back there, which is super cool. I think he thinks I'm the owner of this car, Todd, uh, because we're in small town America. I love that. So cool. Honestly, the 996 is the most hated generation of the 911, which sucks because this thing is making a thousand wheel horsepower. Right now it's down tuned uh, to, you know, somewhere over 600 at the wheels. So still insanely fast and we're gonna go for a ride. Uh, so peak torque is like just after 4,000 RPM. Not only is that a brilliant sound, no, it does not sound as good as a GT3. No, no. <laughs> but the torque from like 
three to 5,000 RPM is ridiculous. Uh, and on top of that, it pulls, and it pulls, and it pulls, and it pulls, and the torque just builds and builds and builds. GT3 cars scream. A 911 turbo roars. Especially with open wastegates. They, they literally dump right underneath the car, and they dump straight down. The wastegates are right back there, about this far from the ground, and they just curb, and they, they're just done. That's the wastegate. <laughs> as you can see, the color of this car is completely insane. They actually bought this as a, basically a rolling shell, uh, and it used to be a race car, and it's basically a rolling shell, uh, and they brought it in, and they stuck turbos on it, uh, open wastegate, custom exhaust, a bunch of custom fabricated parts. Chronomotive actually engineers and fabs a lot of their own stuff in-house here in the heart of the United States of America, uh, and then ships cars and engines and parts all over the world. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, Europe, California, everywhere, okay? Uh, and if you haven't heard of them, the reason why is because they don't need to do a lot of marketing. Their vehicles speak for themselves absolutely. Portomotive makes a 1250 package, 1250 horsepower package for these cars, okay? Um, I wear many hats here, you know, I don't know, probably 13 to 15 hats a day uh, from you know, phone, email, sales, uh, you know, invoicing, estimating, you know, in the meantime trying to get ECUs done, I do remote tuning worldwide calibrations on you know, 996, 997, 991s, uh, all, all the newer cars, anything remotely flashable, tunable. Uh, you know, TIG welding, fabrication, you know, manufacturing, CNC, machine work, uh, supervisory uh, duties to keep the shop running, uh, as well as coordinating with the customers on that, as well as let's design uh, components from the ground up, uh, CAD CAM you know, design, uh, 3D printing, you know, again, manufacturing machining from that. Uh, we, we get together and the, there's some critical moments that need multiple eyes on the engine that I'll come back here and be entertained for a, a short while. I don't do nearly that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the engine builder and I also do office work. And actually to be honest with you, I would much rather be in here all the time, but I can't always do that. You know, it, it wasn't, I didn't go to school for it. I didn't, it was all self-taught. It was all self-taught and um, in the day that I began to learn, it wasn't okay for women to do that. And so um, it got very, it was rough sometimes to do that, and it's not a very glamorous thing to do. Um, however, I realized early on that I had a passion for it. I had a passion for cars. And so there were a lot of hurdles that I had to um, overcome. But I still do what I enjoy doing, and I think that that's an achievement in itself. Um, I'd like to see more women involved in, in the automotive field. I know there's quite a few. I have a lot of talents in my gender that make me a good engine builder. I tell clients sometimes, they're like, really, a woman engine builder? I'm like, well, imagine the things that drive you nuts about a woman, about being picky and finicky and <laughs> detail-oriented and things that will absolutely drive you bonkers. And now apply those to engine building and the detail and the focus that she's able to apply here that normally drives you crazy will are just very, very nice talents to have. The throttle response. Woo! Oh yeah. All right, third gear, 4,000 RPM. Break into the corner, dig in the nose. Holy shit. <laughs> he told me, he told me if you left it at 900 plus wheel horsepower, then I would wrap it around a tree. Yeah, I totally believe him. I would have. I would have. Honestly. Thank you, Todd. This is a taste. 
and I promise you when I buy 911, I'm gonna bring it to you and we're gonna build a beast 997 turbo for myself. Ah, oh, but GT3s are cool too. That's the thing, there are two different camps. If you're not familiar, the GT3s and turbos, very different, different communities too. The guys that want that screaming 9,000 RPM Redline NA versus the guys who want the low down, kick you in the back of the seat torque that comes from a twin turbocharged 911 flat six, okay? And when you let off, you still get that nice flat six sound. You really do. Wow, wow. The view out the back, that GT2 wing is insane. Oh, this is a great straightaway. 6,000 RPM. <laughs> 12 miles an hour, time to shut it down. This is the best bargain in the 911 world right now, which is exactly why we're bringing you this car. If you get a 996 Turbo uh, and you want something that is gonna be balls to the wall, insane, uh, and you're gonna have the time of your life, that I think it's a great buy. Honestly, I think it's a really good buy. Yes, the interior is from an era where Porsche did not have a lot of money. It's the first generation of water-cooled, which a lot of people hate too. Also, clutch in this car, you notice this? This clutch can handle up to, I think Todd was saying like, well, more than 1250 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, and it feels like, it feels like it came from the factory. It is so incredibly gradual, yet it's heavy. It's not, it's a nice heavy though, not too heavy. Uh, and, but the, the main part is you actually feel the engagement. You feel the engagement. And that, that is the important part, right? You guys are gonna hate me. It's not like an SRT4, or a, you know, a neon SRT4, or something like that, where it started out life as a four-door economy car worth 20 grand, tin box, and then you put like a thousand wheel horsepower to it. No, these cars came from the factory with like 500 horsepower. So to stick 1250 in them, the core stability is still here. The core engineering is still here, and that's exactly what you want. Um, a lot of people are like, why don't you guys quarter mile? Why don't you guys road race? Why don't you do this? I'm like, well, if you brought your car to a racetrack and you had a manufacturer you're racing against, you'd be pretty upset. You know, you'd think you know, they have these crazy unlimited budgets that how do you compete against that? And self-promotion, yeah, we build a great product, but why are you going to believe me when all you got to do is look at our client and our clients love to talk about their cars but so many of the clients really they, they want us to come visit and, and it's not necessarily even because we need to tune their car or we need to build their car they want to show us their pride and joy that you know we've helped them accomplish who's behind the tuning who's behind the engine building you know who put this stuff together who's behind the scenes here and, and they really enjoy that. And, uh, they'll literally pay for us to fly across the world just to shake our hands. You know, Virgin Islands, uh, then we went to Greece, Japan, uh, Japan Germany, uh, Dubai, Bahrain, Kuwait, Kuwait. Uh, been around the, the Nürburgring. Uh, England. Uh, have invites mm -hmm. to you know, go to you know, Sweden and France and Canada. And, and they really enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. It's an honor. Mm -hmm. It's an honor to be a part of this um, this phase of the people, and it's an entertainment factor more so than anything else. The giggle. Both of you giggled yesterday, and that was great. <laughs> that was success. The giggle was success. It did take two bar boosts to get you guys to giggle. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think the reason why Todd, Cynthia, Matt, and everybody over at Protomotive uh, prides themselves in the work they do is because there are no compromises. Like I said, the longevity is here, the reliability is here, okay? A lot of their cars have well over 100,000 miles on them with 600 plus wheel horsepower. And a lot of their cars, pretty much all of them I think, uh, you know, still have awesome working AC, 
everything works in the car. Nothing is compromised. It's still a 911. It's just way faster, way more character. Sounds better. Uh, and if you want, you know, this one's got the GT2 wing on it. It's got the Tekkar front and rear bumpers. And it is an absolute riot to drive. So if you guys have never been to Arkansas, I've got to say, I, I highly suggest coming here. I, we couldn't actually get a direct flight from Vancouver to even anywhere in the state. I mean, maybe Little Rock, but that's like so far away. Uh, and even then, I don't think you can get a direct flight. We had to take two connecting flights and then drive three and a half hours to get to Protomotive. So I was not kidding when I'm saying we're in the middle of nowhere. We're actually in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and these roads are some of the most unbelievable roads I've ever driven in my entire life. And we spent six weeks in LA exploring those roads. Those are top notch as well. These are a lot, most of them are a lot tighter, uh, but you're going through a lot of elevation, rolling hills, thick forests, cliffs, uh, elk. There's, it's crazy. It's so insane. And then you pass through little small towns and they have a signs that say population, you know, 392 or something like that. It's awesome. It's the, the last place in the world I would expect to see uh, a, a company building 1,000 horsepower 911s very successfully. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Cynthia, for having us out to allow us to drive these cars uh, and hang out with you guys. They're very humble. They are, they are very hospitable people, and they know how to build killer cars and have a great time. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit us up on Instagram. You can see a bunch of behind the scenes stuff, uh, what we're doing with the show, as well as listen to our podcast every Wednesday on iTunes. Uh, and we have got some more sweet cars coming up. So stay tuned. See you guys next time. All right, you guys, before we go, this is Todd, by the way. Daddy. Uh, we turned the boost up, uh, and Todd's gonna take me for a little bit of a ride, so I don't think we need a little bit more of an explanation than that. Just a little up, I just put it on a little now. You've been okay, driving all right. it around with it on 12 pounds, now I've got it at 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, so what's high boost then? 28. 28, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's like Evo boost. Yeah. And yeah, suck it here. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to experience that. Yeah. Uh, yeah.